This is Project Audion, timeless audio dramas for modern times, created the classic way. Hello, I'm Larry Groby with the Generic Radio Workshop. Welcome back to another Project Audion original. The Situation Comedy. Now that was an invention of radio, one that's been with us now for almost a hundred years. Radio also invented the spin-off series, and one of the best spin-offs and situation comedies was the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Now if Phil Harris had done nothing more than give voice to Baloo the Bear for Walt Disney, well, he'd have some lasting fame. But his radio show produced terrific laughs each week for eight years. Once again, former Bob Hope staff writer Robert L. Mills has penned another delightful and delightfully accurate recreation of this comedy classic. So now, pretend it's a few years after World War II, sit back and enjoy as our Coast to Coast voice actors premiere this brand new episode of the Phil Harris and Alice Faye Show. Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Phil Harris and Alice Faye Show, presented by the makers of Rexall Drug Products and your Rexall Family Druggist. Good evening. This is your Rexall Family Druggist, taking a little time from behind the prescription counter to speak for all 10,000 of us who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign in our windows. That means we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin, and they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now, Rexall brings you the Phil Harris and Alice Fay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tedley, Robert North, Deneen Ruth, and Sam Whitfield. Yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Fay and Phil Harris. <laughs> It's a weekday morning at the Harris household, and Alice is at the breakfast table explaining to Phyllis and little Alice why their dad can't participate in Military Dad's Day at school. So you see, girls, your dad was too old for the draft, and besides, he was already raising a family. You. Really, Mommy? You mean... That's right, honey. To be a good father, he had to sacrifice the only opportunity he'd ever get to serve his country in the army. As a lieutenant, a, a captain, a major, or who knows, maybe even a general. So he wasn't really a chicken like all the girls at school say? <laughs> no, he's not a chicken. That's just his legs. He looks like a chicken in his bathrobe. Is why the guys in the band call them old drumsticks? Good morning, Alice. Good morning, girls. Good morning, Uncle Willie. Good morning, Uncle Willie. Did I just hear you two little girls casting uh, aspersions on their dad's courage? I was just explaining to them why he wasn't in the army during the war. Oh, true. Oh, but don't forget his illustrious career protecting the home front. Hey, that's right. Girls, your dad was an air raid warden. What's an air raid warden? Air raid wardens were very important. Their job was to protect us from bombs falling on our house. Did they wear a uniform? 
Oh, yes. Nice ones, too. Your dad wore a shiny white helmet with an official armband, and he carried some sandbags, a, a fire extinguisher, and a shovel. <laughs> like our gardener. <laughs> that gives me an idea, Willie. Maybe he could wear his Air Raid Warden's uniform on Military Dad's Day. Down the siren! <laughs> Turn off the lights! Black out all the windows! I knew this would happen. They're finally attacking Beverly Hill. Oh, Bill, relax. No one's attacking anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. When I heard you call for an air raid warden, my trainer kicked in and I automatically sprung into action. <laughs> It's all our fault, Daddy. Mommy was just explaining why you can't attend Military Dad's Day at school. What's Military Dad's Day? Oh, it's the day the kids' dads who were in the war show up in their uniforms, but you were exempt from the draft, so... Then Mommy remembered you were an air raid warden. Please! Not just an air raid warden. Your father was a decorated colonel in the Air Raid Warden Corps. <laughs> As I recall, he received the Distinguished Service Cross for extreme bravery during a blackout. One more crack like that, Bob Rod, and I'll have you thrown in the stockade. <laughs> I don't like to brag, girls, but I commanded the elite 87th Haberdashery Fusilier. What's a haberdashery? It's clothing. We were in charge of protecting the brown derby. So, Willie and I were explaining to the girls why you didn't qualify for Military Dad's Day, and... Oh, then I remembered that you were a decorated air raid warden. Yeah, Daddy. Could you wear your 87th fusive, whatever they were called, uniform, and join the other dads? Really? You'd really like me to do that, honey? Gee, I wonder what I did with all them medals. I'd better drop your old uniform off at the tailor to have it taken out. Taken out? Hold on there, Gertrude. You of all people should know that I haven't added an ounce of fat to this gorgeous frame. Okay, then. Let's just say your muscles somehow managed to rearrange themselves. Oh, I I'll get it. I'm late for work, anyway. Careful, Don Winslow. There may be enemy ground forces going door to door. Hi, Willie. Uh, where's Phil? Oh, he's in the kitchen. He's telling the girls air raid warden war stories. Really? I was in the 87th Fusiliers, too. My outfit was in charge of protecting chases. <laughs> The first thing the enemy captures are the five-star eateries. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're uh, uh, Goodbye, Frankie. You know the way in. Hi, Alice. Hi, Phil. Uh, where are the girls? They're upstairs getting ready for school. Uh, I just stopped by to see if Colonel Harris here has a spare couple of chefs. Two of mine didn't show up. Very funny, Major Remley. I see you heard about Military Dad's Day. No, but uh, if the girls are thinking of inviting you, shouldn't it be called Scraping the bar Bottom of the Barrel Day? I'll be upstairs looking for that uniform. What uniform? Frankie, the girls actually want me to wear my Air Raid Warden's uniform to Military Dad's Day at school. We gotta think of a way to get me out of it. You should feel honored, Curly. Don't forget, uh, you were a legend in the Warden Corps. Uh, you even posed for our recruiting poster. Uncle Phil wants you. <laughs> uh, I did look great in that uniform, didn't I? And don't forget the training film you produced. When it hit the theaters, I remember people lined up for blocks. Remember how it went? One, be calm. Two, get under shelter. Three, don't run. Obey your air raid warden. Four, stay home. Five, keep off the highway. Six, don't phone. Obey your air raid warden. 
There are rules that you should know What to do and where to go When you hear the sirens blow Stop, look, and listen Seven, the smoke Eight, help all the kiddies Most of all, obey your just don't make training films like that anymore. I don't care what you say, Frankie. I'd still feel s silly sitting beside all those real veterans with their stripes and their gold bars and their hats with eagles on them. What if you had a real military uniform to wear? And <laughs> just how could I do that, Houdini? Well, uh, you could join the reserves. <laughs> the reserves? Don't be ridiculous. Who would accept me as a reservist at my age? The Coast Guard. It's the only service that accepts guys up to the age of 41. I got a poker buddy who loves it. It's a free cruise every summer on the government's tab. Gee, that does sound like fun, but I think I'm a couple summers past my use-by date. No, no problem. I just happen to have the perfect solution. What's that? I know a guy. Oh, no. Not another one. No, now, now hear me out. This guy can forge any. He can adjust your birth certificate for inflation if you get my drift. <laughs> Sounds fair. And I would look spiffy and white with all them brass buttons, wouldn't I? And just think how proud of you the girls would be. Besides, I'll be with you to vouch for your character. <laughs> Hello, Julius. Oh, it's you, Mr. Harris. Nope, nobody home. Julius, just leave the groceries on the table. My wife happens to be upstairs. And just what are you two near do while plotting in her absence? We're joining the Coast Guard Reserves. Yeah, we've decided to stop thinking only of ourselves and to serve our country. Which one? Careful, Ensign Abruzio. You are speaking to a superior officer. And have you superior officers carefully considered the swimming requirement? What swimming requirement? All Navy or Coast Guard applicants must be able to swim at least a half mile unassisted. Now, how would a kid like you possibly know a thing like that? Them recruiters are always circling my high school like vultures. <laughs> or would you prefer to fall off your ship and sink like a stone? He's got a point there, Curly. I think we're sunk before we've even left the dock. Not necessarily. You have a solution for us, Admiral Nelson? <laughs> Looking at him, the star goalkeeper on my high school water polo team. I think he's got us hanging from the yard up. <laughs> okay, Julius, how about this? Would a new crisp $20 bill interest you in teaching us how to swim just far enough to pass the test? <laughs> no, but an old limp 50 for a brand new pair of Johnny Weissmuller swim pins might do the trick. <laughs> You got a deal, Captain Nemo. I'll give you your first lesson on Saturday after we practice at the Y. Meet you there at noon. Okay, but you can't say a single word to Alice about this. Why not? Oh, you know, like any loyal and devoted wife, she'd get all blubbery and teary when she finds out I'll be spending every summer on the high seas chasing smugglers, drug runners, and illegal aliens. Uh, that sounds pretty dangerous. Are you sure we should be doing this, Kirby? Of course. It's our patriotic duty, Frankie. This great nation deserves to be protected in peacetime, too, you know. Uh, maybe, but I'm getting cold feet. <laughs> Not as cold as they'll be when you have to abandon ship in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> you know... 
The Coast Guard has a perfect record. Since they were founded, not a single coast has gone missing. <laughs> but this operation must be kept strictly on a need-to-know basis, completely on the QT. Aye, aye, Skipper. You and D are my middle initials. My lips are sealed. <laughs> my motto is, loose lips sink mora. <laughs> You know, Julius, that brig is going to get mighty tired of seeing you. Bill and Frankie are joining what? The Coast Guard Reserves. They've already applied for a transfer from the Air Raid Wardens. Why? They're embarrassed because they didn't save in the war. Mr. Harris, excuse me, Colonel Harris, thinks the girls will laugh at him in his air raid warden's uniform. Oh, so that's it. He wants to wear a real military uniform on Military Dad's Day. Or a reasonable facsimile thereof. <laughs> you know, Julius, in a way his crazy plan makes sense. He's going to all this trouble just so the girls won't feel inferior to their classmates. Well, that's my fill, all right. I hate to admit it, but I'm kind of proud of the schnook myself. In fact, I'm teaching him and Mr. Remley how to swim. Oh, that's so noble of you, Julius, thinking of the girls like that. But you know that... Well, that... The colonel looks like a chicken in his swimming trunks? <laughs> yeah, I've talked to the guys in the band. <laughs> really afraid if they go through with this, they'll be arrested by the FBI. The FBI? Why would they be arrested? Well, I overheard Mr. Remley say he knows a guy who falsifies birth certificates. Why would he need to do that? I hate to break this to you all at once, Miss Faye, but old Drumsticks is slightly over age. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right, Julius. Lying on a government application is a serious felony. They could both end up in Leavenworth. And if I know them screws, they'll be in separate cells. <laughs> Those boys must be taught a lesson. I'm nipping this ridiculous plan in the bud right now. I just knew you'd think of something, Miss Faye. After all, you've managed to keep the shlemiel out of jail this far. <laughs> <sighs> Let me see. Oh, I worked with a Coast Guard captain who was a tech advisor on one of my movies. I heard he's now an admiral. Well, if Teddy Hutchinson can't blow this plan out of the water, then no one can. Hand me that phone, Julius. And the torpedoes, Miss Faye. Full speed ahead. <laughs> Wow, look at all the federal offices in here. It, there's the IRS, the FBI, passport office. That's where Alice thinks we are. Told her I needed my birth certificate to renew my passport in case the band gets a job in a foreign country. <laughs> ah. Well, here it is. Ah, here it is. United States Coast Guard, abandon hope all ye who enter here. <laughs> where, where does it say that last? Nowhere. It's my overactive southern imagination overacting again. Uh, just remember, you're doing this for the girls. Let's go in. Uh, pardon me, sir, but is this where new recruits are supposed to report? Well, actually, we had high hopes of Amelia Earhart being Walton here someday, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little joke we tell our new recruits to show them how hot. I'm Captain Barrett, and who are you? I'm Philip Harris, and this is my guitarist, Francis Remley, reporting for duty. Oh, I love that spirit. You must be one of the new recruits at Airway Roden Headquarters told me about. Oh, come right in, gentlemen. We've been waiting for you. 
sweet Curly, I told you being celebrities would open doors for us, even in a military bureaucracy like this. <laughs> you must be a fan of our Rexall radio show. No one never heard of it. <laughs> what a defile they should be as your entire background. Oh, let's see here. It, it says you were both awarded the coveted Mayor D. Braun skillet. <laughs> Yeah, with a uh, marinated mushroom cluster. <laughs> and neither restaurant lost one pot, pan, plate, soup spoon, or dessert cart due to enemy action. <laughs> well, it's an honor to finally meet you both. <clears throat> this is my nurse, Lieutenant Syringe of the Medical Corps. She'll be giving you your physical. Promise. <laughs> I'm happy to meet both of you gentlemen. I look forward to examining you. Now before you open your mouth, Clyde, I would remind you that you're flirting with uh, conduct unbecoming an officer. <laughs> oh, I just hope the Coast Guard can live up to the high performance standards that you two have set. See, Curly, if you had just sold a few more hit records, we could have been officers. <laughs> My songs are always at the top of the chart. Mark, dost I hear a song cue? Well, give me that old-time religion, that old-time religion. Give me that old-time religion. It's good enough for me. Well, it was good for Paul and Silas. Good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. And it's good enough for me. So show me that place by the river. That place by the river. Show me that place by the river. On Georgia's sunny shore. Well, save that cup of the lion. Save that cup of the lion. Save that cup of the lion. We go start and tell it me. Nothing but that old time religion. religion. Oh, 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 well, if the David was a liar, then it had to set him free. And if it's good enough for David, then bring it down to me. I want to live in religion, 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 religion
Harris thought his needed a bigger finish, so he sang Melancholy Baby into my stethoscope. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, Coast Guard Recruiting Office, Captain Bennett speaking. Captain Bennett, I'm glad you answered. Oh, Admiral Hutchinson, oh, what can I do for you, sir? Uh, have those two air raid warden transfers, Harris and Remley, shown up yet? Yes, sir. They've already been given their physicals, and right now they're down at the pool taking their swimming test. Swimming test? They're not in any danger of... Drowning. Oh, no chance of that. Uh, they brought their own swimming coach. <laughs> well, keep them out of danger. I promise Miss Faye we wouldn't harm them in any way. Not Alice Faye, the movie star. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, but Harris is her husband. <laughs> She's such a lovely woman. I, I worked with her on a movie at Fox Studios, and... She couldn't have been kinder to me. Oh, she always seemed so nice in her films, too. <laughs> well, she even helped get my nephew a job on the lot after he flunked out of the Naval Academy. I promised her we'd reject her husband before he had a chance to break the law by submitting a forged birth certificate. Well, we haven't requested proof of age yet, sir, but... Oh, thanks for alerting me. I'll make sure they're both rejected before we do. <laughs> and Alice Faye is one of my favorites. Well, just remember, Captain, if Harris is caught with a fake birth certificate, the scandal will not only harness her career, but we'll both end up in the brig, pounding piles of rocks into tiny little pebbles. <laughs> Well, you can depend on me, sir. You know, I've gotten rather used to those gold bars on my sleeve. <laughs> Go ahead and park in my driveway, Frankie. I need you to come in and help me with Alice. I'd be happy to help you with anything involving Alice. What's the problem? Well, when Alice finds out how close we came to joining the Coast Guard, she's sure to go completely ballistic. Why? Uh, we don't have to tell her we were rejected for chronic, chronic seasickness. We'll tell her we just changed our minds. <laughs> well, we still came close to spending every summer on the high seas chasing smugglers, drug runners, and illegal aliens. Oh, oh, remind me. And you know how women are. They're very dependent, afraid they'll be left alone, vulnerable and unprotected when they're unexpectedly, unexpectedly separated from a loved one. Oh. Who's the loved one? Huh? Me! <laughs> Now, we have to be very careful to let her down gently. I'm depending on you to back me up. Oui, mon capitaine. <laughs> Honey, we're back. I'm in the kitchen, Phil. Where have you guys been? Uh, uh, better you don't know. Uh, honey, listen carefully. What I'm about to tell you will be very upsetting. I know that, I know that, believe me, I do. But there's just no other way to handle this. I wish it hadn't happened, but it did. What's done is done, and it's all in the past now. Water under the bridge. Oh, no. Another band member quit? Worse than that, honey. Much worse. He died? <laughs> Frankie and I tried to join the Coast Guard Reserve. Uh, but only if they promised us death job. Where the smugglers, rum runners, and illegal aliens couldn't get at us. Oh, that. Well, I called an admiral I worked with at Fox to make sure that would never happen. So far, so good. But honey, 
I just wanted to have a real war veteran's uniform to wear on Military Dad's Day. I know you did, dear, but I don't think lying about your age was the proper way to do it. Do you think that would be a good example for the girls? In your heart, you know she's right, girl. Hold on there, Kilroy. <laughs> You're the one who talked me into adjusting my age for inflation in the first place. Just how much adjusting did it need? Well, I used the date from my bio. Everybody in show business lies about their age. Of course they do. It's an occupational hazard. But lying to the government is another matter. It's a federal crime. Uh, you heard the woman, Curly. Go and sin no more. <laughs> oh. And I picked up your air raid warden's uniform from the tailor this afternoon. All cleaned, pressed, and ready for you to wear on Military Dad's Day. You'll look so handsome. The girls will be bursting with pride. Major Remley, if I hear Uncle Phil wants you one more time, I'll have you court-martialed. <laughs> Before Alice and Phil return, here's a conversation that took place in a certain Rexall drunk store recently. You know, Helen, before the baby came, I never used to worry about what brand of drug product to use, but now I'm really beginning to think about it. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing here in this Rexall drug store. What do you mean? I want the druggist here to tell you what he told me a long time ago. Oh, Mr. Druggist, I want you to tell my friend just why Rexall drug products are so reliable. Well, since you're standing here by the hosiery counter, reminds me of one reason. Did you know that some liquid drug products are filtered through 60 separate sheets of the finest nylon? Nylon? Exactly. You see, ma'am, that's done to make sure that not even the tiniest particle of a solid remains. Now, we Rexall druggists know that all of the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company get the same kind of patient, careful testing. And that's why some 10,000 Rexall family druggists will tell you you can depend on any drug product it bears the name Rexall. And I'll get all these products only at a Rexall drugstore? That's right. Just look for the orange and blue Rexall sign in the window. Good health to all from Rexall. Oh, Phil, the girls are so proud of you. They took your Air Raid Warden's magazine, Sand and Shovels, with your picture on the cover to show all the other kids at school. Well, I'm glad they liked it, honey, but I still don't think the Air Raid Warden's got much respect on Military Dad's Day. Why not? Three of the dads asked me if I could get them reservations at Chasen's. <laughs> This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. The part of Frank Remley was played by Elliot Lewis. Julius was played by Walter Tapley. And the captain was played by Frank Nelson. Alice Faye appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Stay tuned for the adventures of Sam Spade, which follows immediately on NBC. <laughs> That was fun, wasn't it? That's our Project Audion original for today. Our cast included Pete Lutz in Texas, Angela Young in Florida, Dwayne Nock in New Jersey, Julie Hoverson in Washington, Bob Beaumont in California, Mel Rose in Pennsylvania, Harry Middlebrooks in California, Randy Cardoon in Washington, and Robert L. Mills in California who also scripted the show. 
while production was handled in Texas by yours truly, Larry Groby. We hope you enjoyed today's show. If so, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and consider subscribing or joining our mailing list back on projectaudion.com. And be sure to check out the many other Project Audion episodes available online. Until next time, thanks for listening. Oh, and you must remember this. One, be calm. Two, get under shelter. Three, don't run. Obey your air raid warden. Four, stay home. Five, keep off the highway. Six, don't phone. Obey your air raid warden. There are rules that you should know. What to do and where to go When you hear the sirens blow Stop, look, and listen Seven, don't smoke Eight, help all the kiddies Most of all Obey your air raid warden lights wait for information most of all obey your air raid warden stop the panic don't get in a huff our aim today is to call their bluff follow these rules and that is enough obey your air raid warden They're, it's it, very creatively done. Yeah, I watch Don't it and I'm like, smoke. why are they smoking? <laughs> it's like out of nowhere and then They're singing. Doctors. Don't smoke. <laughs> Guys. They need some lip sync training, though. I think. <laughs> yeah, the sound is a little off. <laughs> I like at the end when they all three heads come real close together. Ba -da. I'm like, you nerds. <laughs> this is very cute. <laughs> it was... It